Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with a quick review of the Energen 300 from our good friends at Vulcan. This is a portable power station that provides all of the outputs you need to charge all of your thirsty portable devices when you're away from home. Now, I'm going to spend a few minutes explaining exactly what the product provides, but I wanted to start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and that way you'll understand exactly what you get if you decide this product's right for you. And then I'll talk about the technology, because what Vulcan's done here is built a portable power station that incorporates all the latest technologies for charging the unit, for holding the charge, and then distributing that charge to external devices. And it's important you understand the differences. I'll take a closer look at the unit, and I'll point out the ports, the indicators, and all the things you need to understand about using the product correctly. And then I'll come back one more time and point out a few things that really separate this portable power station from a lot of other models on the market that you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first pop open the box, you'll find the power station. It's incredibly portable. This thing is about a lunchbox size, weighs about eight pounds, so it's not entirely light, but it's perfect for a nice long weekend of camping, or maybe you're taking a road trip, or you're flying your drones and you want to get out there and charge your drone batteries. It's really perfect for all those things. Now, I know there are larger portable power stations on the market, but think about dragging a big 20 pound portable power station along with you. Something this small, again, it's like lunchbox size. So you get the unit. Also, there are two charging kits included. There's an AC charging kit here, and you can use that at home. You'll basically plug it into the wall. There's a converter that converts the AC from your home into DC to charge the unit. You also get a DC charging cable. You can use this in your car, plug that into a convenience outlet, plug this into the unit, and you can charge it from your car batteries. You can also charge the unit from a solar panel, and you can even charge it through the USB-C port on the front. It's a bi-directional port. So you have four different ways to charge the unit. And the best part is you can use the AC unit and use a USB charger to charge it, and you can get the whole thing charged in about two hours. If you're gonna charge it from a solar panel, depending on what type of solar panel you're using and how much sunlight's out there and what way you've got it facing, about three and a half hours. But if you think about that, it's the cheapest way to charge the unit, and it's the easiest way if you're out camping. Just take a small portable solar panel with you, set it up outside your tent, it'll drink in that sunlight, it'll turn it into DC, and charge that unit for free. So that's pretty incredible. Also included is a warranty card and a full instruction manual that I always recommend you read through because there's a lot of good information in here about using this product correctly, how to charge it, how to store it, how to charge things from it. So always read the manual because that way you'll get the best value out of the product. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the unit. It has an internal capacity of 299 watt hours, which again, isn't the biggest portable power station. It's not the smallest, it's not a little battery bank. It kind of fits right in that Goldilocks zone between too small to really be useful for a couple of days of camping and too big to bring along on that camping trip. So with this one, charge it at home, take it along with you. I promise you, you're gonna find a lot of uses out there in the field to charge and operate external devices. It has an output power of 300 watts, which can actually surge to 600 watts when needed. And that's very important because if you're using this product with anything that has an internal motor or a compressor, things like a drill or, I don't know, a fan or a blender. I don't know why you take a blender on a camping trip, but if you had a blender or if you've got a cooler that's got a compressor inside, those devices draw a little bit more current when they first turn on and then they settle down. And knowing you've got surge protection built in means that you can plug it in and not have to worry about popping a breaker. You can draw a little more current when you need it with that drill and not have any issues. So it's got 600 watts of maximum power. It also provides a ton of external connections and I'll get into those in a minute. Now, any portable power station you're considering really has three things that are important to consider. The first is, how do you charge it? And the second is, once you're charging it, what kind of battery chemistry is inside the unit to hang on to that charge? And then the third thing, which is really important, is once you have that charged battery with you out in the field, how is that power distributed to external devices? Because the whole point of buying a product like this is to be able to bring some power out in the field, and it's important you have the right kind of output so you can charge all of your devices. So let's start with the charging aspects of it. I already mentioned there are four different ways to charge it. You can charge it at home, you can charge it in your car, you can charge it from a solar panel. Pretty much anybody's solar panel will work just fine with it. And you can also charge it through the USB-C port on the front. I like that flexibility because I normally charge the unit at home, take it with me on my camping, 
camping trip, but if we're moving between different camping sites, it's nice to know I can plug it into my car and top it off when I'm heading for the new camping site. I also love the fact that I can set a solar panel up outside the tent because there are so many solar panels on the market, and this company makes a really nice one that are small and portable. You slide them in your car. When you get to your camping trip, you just put it outside your tent, and you can charge the unit from there. I like the fact also that I can combine AC charging with USB charging. Now, one thing I normally mention is that I'm not a big fan of external bricks like this to do the conversion, but I like it in this case because what they were going for with this product is a small portable unit. And the problem with a lot of the larger units, not the problem, but the challenge with the larger units, is they build the charging circuit inside the portable power station. And that's great if you've got a big power unit, but if you want something small like this, you don't need to bring this along in the field. You're not going to be plugging this into a tree to charge it, right? So that's extra weight. It's extra bulk. It would have made it a lot heavier and a lot bigger. So when you're charging it at home, not a big deal. It's got an external charger. Just plug it in at home, charge it up, unplug it, take it with you out in the field. You're not carrying all that extra bulk. All right, so let's talk about the battery chemistry because that's a super important consideration for any portable power station you're looking through. You want to make sure that the internal chemistry of the battery is the latest and greatest because a lot of the portable power stations you're considering are probably using lithium polymer technology, which is LiPo technology, and that works okay for cell phones and laptops and other portable devices that are going to be used indoors or used in a climate that's pretty, uh, pretty normal. The challenge with LiPo, though, is it doesn't do real well in hot weather and cold weather. It also doesn't hold the charge as long, so if you charge it on a Monday, then you try to use the unit on a Wednesday, it may not be at 100%. But the bigger issue with it is it has a limited amount of charge and recharge cycles. So with LiPo technology, if you get 300 charge cycles out of it, that's pretty good. And if you do the math on that, that's not a very long time to hang on to the unit, and the batteries are not replaceable. So once you buy a portable power station with lithium polymer batteries, the minute you start charging it, it has a life where it's only going to be charged so many times. This product uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is the very latest chemistry and battery technology, which provides well over 3,000 charges. Now, if you do the math on that one, if you charged it once a day, which you won't because you're only going to use it a couple times a week, but if you did charge it once a day, you'd have well over 10 years of use out of the product. So it's going to be around for a long time. The batteries are going to last a long time. The lithium iron phosphate batteries are also really, really good in hot weather and cold weather. And if you think about that, that's when you're going to be camping. You're going to be out in a tent when it's going to be cold at night or it's going to be really hot if you're out in the desert or someplace that gets really, really hot. So you want a portable power station that has the ability to handle the hot weather and the cold weather and hold that charge for a very long time. So the chemistry is really good. You've got a lot of ways to charge it. Now, once you've got it fully charged and you're out there in the field and you want to start charging external devices, how does this product connect to all those external devices? Well, for starters, it's got an AC outlet on the back, which can provide 300 watts of steady state power and can surge up to 600 watts. So it's perfect for plugging anything in you'd plug at home, up to 300 watts typically for steady state. And then if you plug a drill in, you can draw a little extra current and you'll be just fine. The big difference between this and a lot of other portable power stations is that that AC is a pure sine wave output. And that's very important if you're plugging in any kind of sensitive electronics, whether it be a laptop or a phone or something like that, you wanna make sure you have a pure sine wave because a lot of those devices that operate off of AC need the clock at 60 cycles to do things inside the electronics. And if you've got a modified sine wave like a lot of these products products have on the market, uh, you'll have some issues with those electronic devices. So 300 watts, pure sine wave on the AC. On the DC side, you'll notice there is no DC port on this. And you might be thinking, gee, it would have been great if they put a cigarette lighter plug in there and I could plug things in. Well, the challenge with that is, again, the design team at Vulcan was going for a small portable unit that was easy to bring along. And the minute you put that larger connector on it, there's not a lot of real estate, so it could be a real issue. Instead, what they did was build in two 5521 barrel connectors on the bottom. Both of those will provide pure DC 12 volts at up to 10 amps. And those are universal connectors that you can use with cables to directly charge laptops or DVD players or some other portable electronics like game consoles. But you can also find and these are available everywhere, cables like this that are 5521 plugs on one end and a standard DC port just like in your car. And all you have to do is plug this into the 5521 and boom, you've got that convenience outlet just like in your car. And you can plug two of these in at the same time and deliver up to 10 amps through those connections. So this is a great way for you not to carry a lot of extra stuff with you, but if you need that DC connection like this, you can find these on the market. 
Now the last type of connection is the USB connection that we're all used to. It's what we charge our phones with, our portable tablets, all the electronics we bring along. And there are two different styles of USB connections. USB-A, which is the older style of connection, that's the larger plug, and USB-C, which is the newest style, and that's the smaller plug. And there's also standard charging, and then quick charging technology. So I'll start with the USB-A connections. You'll find two of them right over here. Both of those will deliver up to 18 watts of charging power individually. They're also QC or quick charging ports, which means when you connect a device up that has quick charging capabilities, that port will look at the device, it'll determine the current charge level, and it actually will adjust its voltage and current to safely and quickly charge that device. So it's, it's a smart port and it's a QC port. So if you're using any kind of quick charge device, like a phone or a tablet or drone batteries or a game console, the minute you plug it in, you're gonna get the quickest and safest charge to that device. You'll also find two USB-C ports on the other side, and those are the latest technology for modern phones and game consoles and drone batteries. One of those is 18 watts, the other one is up to 60 watts. Both of those are PD or power delivery capable devices, which is the other quick charging standard. So if you have a phone, drone batteries, a tablet, anything portable that uses that PD standard, that same type of interrogation and adjustment of the voltage and current takes place on the USB-C ports. Now the important thing to note here is, Three of these ports are 18 watts, which are incredibly powerful ports. Two of those are QC on the USB-A. One is a PD on the USB-C, but that other USB-C is a 60 watt port. And the reason that's important is because if you're plugging something in like a large tablet or your laptop or certain drone batteries or controllers, you need a little extra power and 60 watts is plenty of power to charge your laptop typically, charge those drone batteries or charge anything else that needs extra power. You don't find that in a lot of portable power stations. So you really have a wide variety of AC, DC and USB outlets that allow you to charge up to seven devices at the same time, which is pretty incredible. Another important feature in this product is that it has passed through technology which means you can be charging it and using it at the same time. So if you plug in a computer on the back of this and set it down on the floor next to your computer, you can actually charge the unit, draw AC out of the unit, and if you have a power failure, it snaps into play and immediately keeps that power up. So it's almost like an uninterruptible power supply for your computer, which is pretty nice. So it's got really everything you need in a package, again, that weighs I'm gonna say about eight pounds, so it's incredibly light. You can take it along with you. Uh, I, I look at it and I think to myself, it's a lunchbox, and maybe you packed a really heavy sandwich and it weighs about the same as that would weigh. But it's one of those things where it's small enough where you can take it with you pretty much anywhere. You're almost gonna forget you have it with you until your phone starts to get a little low and you think, boy, I'd really like to recharge this. And I'm out here in the middle of the woods, I got no place to plug it in. Oh, wait a minute. I brought along that Vulcan product and I can plug my phone into it and recharge it. So I think it's a great product. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at it and I'll point out the ports and indicators and all the things you need to do to use it correctly. And then I'll come back and remind you of a few things that separate this from a lot of other portable power stations on the market. The Energen 300 Portable Power Station by Vulcan features a high impact plastic case, which makes it lightweight and incredibly durable. Along the top on one side, you'll find a courtesy light that you can turn on with a button on the front of the unit, and I'll show you that in a minute. On the bottom of the unit are four rubber feet that are great for protecting the surface you set it down on, and also keep this from slipping on that surface. On the top of the unit, you'll find a rubberized handle that makes it really easy to carry this around. On the rear of the units where the AC connections are made, you've got a single three-prong AC outlet just like in your home. Anything you plug in at home, you can plug in here. It provides 120 volts at 60 hertz, up to 300 watts of steady state power that can surge to 600 watts. It's also a pure sine wave output. Above that is a button to turn this outlet on. You'll want to keep this off if you're not using it because once you turn it on, it's going to draw power out of the battery, so only turn this on when you need it. On the other end, you'll find all the connections for your DC output, as well as your charging port. Starting on the left on the bottom, that's an input port, and that's where you'll plug in the home AC kit, the car kit, or your solar panel, and that's how you'll charge the unit. To the right of that are two DC output ports, those are both 5521s, and again, you can directly connect these to devices with a customized cable, or you can use one of the conversion cables I showed you earlier that turn these into courtesy ports just like in your car. Both of these will provide 12 volts, and they share 10 amps of output between them. Above that are two USB-A ports. Both of these are 18-watt QC ports. Individually, they'll interrogate a device you plug in that's QC compatible and adjust the voltage and current to accommodate that device. On the left side, you'll find two USB-C ports. The top one is an 18-watt. The bottom one is a 60-watt. 
Both of these are PD ports, again, a quick charging technology. The bottom one is also bi-directional, which means you can use it to charge devices. You can also use it to charge the product. And you can combine that with the AC charging to speed things up to charge the internal batteries. Above that are three buttons. The center one turns the unit on. This turns the LED on. The one on the left is a power save button, and that pertains to the AC on the back of the unit, which draws the most power when it's on. If you have the AC enabled, this unit will either be in power save mode or not in power save mode. If it's not in power save mode, the unit will watch that AC output, and after eight hours, if there's no drain on that port, it'll turn it off. When you turn on power save, it still watches that output, but only for two hours. So after two hours, if no current's being drawn, it'll turn off. So that allows you to save the power in the battery. Now I'll turn the unit on here by holding this down. You'll see the LED display come on right there. Once the unit powers up, then all the other ports are active at that point, and you can see the LED display gives you a lot of really good information. On the left-hand side, you'll see how much power is left in the battery, watching that bar graph. You can also read it's 69% right now. To the right, you'll notice I've got zero watts of output, so I'm not drawing any current out of the unit presently. Now, if I want to turn the LED on, all I have to do is tap that button, and the LED will come on. That's bright, that's a little less bright, that's SOS, and finally, that's strobe. And to turn it off, I'll tap it one more time. And that light is really handy. Say, for example, you break down on the side of the road, you can put that in strobe mode. Other cars will know you're off to the side of the road. Now, if you want to turn on certain circuits, let me tap that one. That'll turn on the 12 volts. I turned it on, turned it off. That turns on the 12 volts as well as the USB. If I want to turn on the AC, I'll push that button on the other side. And you'll notice the AC is now on. And check closely, you'll see that I'm drawing one watt and it's, it's bouncing around a little bit, but that AC circuit draws power out of the battery whenever it's turned on, so always keep that off when you're not using it. You'll know it's on or off by looking at the LED on the top of it. If you'd like to turn the unit off for the day, just hold this button down, the display will go dark, and the unit turns off. That's pretty much it for the Energen 300. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when you're comparing the Energen Vulcan 300 to other portable power stations you may be considering. The first is, how do you charge the unit? You've got four different ways to charge this product, AC at home, DC in your car, solar panel, or even the USB-C bi-directional port on the front. A lot of other portable power stations may provide AC charging, maybe even DC charging, but they're not really equipped for solar, and they're certainly not equipped for USB charging. So the product gives you a lot of different ways to charge it. Another big difference is the battery chemistry inside this unit. As I mentioned, a lot of products on the market use LiPo technology, which is old school stuff. It's not great for bringing portable power stations in the hot or cold environments and it only gives you a limited number of recharge cycles. This one uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is the latest technology. It's used in a lot of the rechargeable cars. It can handle a charge real well. It holds onto a charge for a long time and provides over 3,000 recharge cycles, which is really important. As far as output goes, you've got an AC outlet on the back, 300 watts up to 600 watt surge, pure sine wave, which is different than a lot of the other portable power stations. Always check to make sure it's a pure sine wave with any power station you're considering. On the front of the unit, I've got two 5521s, like I'd mentioned, that are 12 volts at 10 amps, and you can use a connector like this to convert it into a car outlet if you need that, or you can find cables to directly charge DVD players, game consoles, computers, and all kinds of other portable devices. And finally, with the USB-C charging, you've got two ports. One of them is 18 watts, the other one is 60 watts. Both of those are power delivery, which are smart charging ports that will interrogate devices and adjust the voltage and current, and two USB-A ports that are both QC that'll do the same thing for a quick charge device. So they give you everything you need in a package that weighs about eight pounds. It's small, it's portable, it's powerful. And I know there are bigger portable power stations on the market, but why would you drag a big, heavy portable power station out in the field that has a whole lot more power just to bring it home with 50% of the power still in the unit? That only means you brought the wrong unit. This is the right unit. So if you're going out for a couple of days of camping or you're gonna go fly your drones and you wanna charge them between the locations you're driving to, this is the perfect solution for that. So I hope you found this review helpful. I like this product an awful lot. I've been using it for a couple of weeks and it's quickly become one of the two that I take with me out in the field pretty much every time I leave the house. So I think you're gonna like it as well. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And as always, until next time, stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.